Okay, so how did the band come together? The uh, band started when I was on a radio tour with another artist. His name is Jay Sparrow. And I uh, visited a radio station, and the on-air personality was managing uh, Matt, our lead singer, our current lead singer. And she showed me a music video, or just a YouTube video of him singing with an acoustic guitar and said he was looking for a guitar player. And I said, yeah, I'm his new guitar player. So <laughs> Matt and I got together, and we uh, started hanging out, writing songs, and then uh, we put a cover band together and we played around Edmonton for a few years, just getting some experience uh, playing on stage together and all the, all the while writing songs and things. And then uh, when it came time to, to launch the band, we added Mike, our bass player, and, and off we went. Cool, cool. Um, so how did you choose the band name? Uh, that same Jay Sparrow, he's, he's got his fingerprints uh, all over this project. Uh, he's a good friend of ours and he, uh, uh, we were kicking around all kinds of different names and he came up with that one. It's actually from a Walt Whitman poem and it's about, uh, the, uh, com combining the old traditional stuff with the new and it's talking about the, the prairies and the cities. And so we thought, yeah, that's kind of a cool, a cool vibe for the band. Cause that kind of fits what we do. Okay, and how would you describe the genre of the band? It's country, um, but we have a little uniqueness to our our, uh, our take on it, I think. Matt's soaring okay. vocals definitely, you know, make us, I think, stand out a little bit. Right, and um, who are some of the musical influences that maybe you guys decided to take in order to create the band? Did anyone, like, inspire the band, like, uh, artists and bands from of, of older generations oh for sure uh there's five guys in the band who've all played music for years and years and years uh we've been, all been in bands in different genres all the way from you know punk music to country and and so all five of us bring uh, a big musical stew <laughs> to uh to the sound of the band i think that's that's another reason that makes it unique is there's a lot of years of experience and there's a lot of different music that that we kind of boil down to what makes us us you know everybody from you know mike loves acdc that thumping you know four on the floor sound and then you know uh jay 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 and if you you know pull off his headphones and ask what he's listening to it's probably going to be some progressive rock or or punk band or something like that and then you know everybody and then you know all the traditional stuff the stuff everybody loves you know from country music world we respect all that garth brooks and Willie and everybody like that. And for current artists, I would say someone like Eric Church is probably a big influence in our songwriting and that kind of storytelling. Right. Um, how do you go about writing songs? Like, do you have like a couple of guys that take action or does it like a group process or how, how does that happen? Um, there's three of us in the band who are the main songwriters, uh, myself, Mike Nash and Matt Singer. Um, and sometimes we write together sometimes we'll write uh, one or two of us with outside writers um a, a lot lately has been with with outside writers uh just bringing in kind of a cool new fresh perspective and yeah and lots of times we'll you know end up doing exactly what you and i are doing end up writing a song over zoom with someone who's half a world away which is pretty neat gotcha so what's everyone like like personality wise is there a couple oddballs or is there everyone has like how how does that work <laughs> well it's uh, being in a band is like dating uh five different people at once right so you gotta you gotta get along because you're spending a lot of time traveling you're spending a lot of time you know in uncomfortable situations so you gotta be getting along and uh we're all friends and we've all played together um my, uh, mike and doc the guitar player actually go back quite a ways so they, they've toured Canada in a band called uh, Red River City Sparrows a long time ago and so you know everyone's got their quirks and everything else but uh it's it's like I said it's like dating and and I think we've we've figured it out we're uh, we're friends first so that that's what that's what's important that makes sense that's such a good anal analogy for you to use also it's true <laughs> so what is each band member's role like does everyone have a specific role? Like some people, like are some of them like more showstoppers and the other more like hardworking or? Uh, everybody contributes in their own way for sure. Um, Mike, the bass player and I are, are kind of the co-leaders of the band. 
Uh, so we, you know, kind of take care of all the day-to-day -day stuff, interact with the label and the, and the agency and, and do all the, that work. Um, and then, yeah, the other guys all bring their strengths in, uh, to different aspects, whether it's performing live, Doc does the, the lead guitar stuff, um, and Jay, you know, just holding us all down there on the drums. And Matt, of course, is an outstanding vocal talent. So there's, there's that. That makes sense. Gotcha. And uh, what sets your band apart from other bands? If people like haven't heard you before and they see and they see you and they're like, oh, these guys sound pretty cool. What is that kind of spark that makes you different? Um, I, I like to call us a 20, 20 year overnight success. Um, like I said, we've had a lot of experience playing live, a lot of experience writing songs, a lot of experience performing. And I think that's kind of preparation and everything else is, gives us a strength. Um, our live show is definitely where we win fans over. Uh, when you, when you come to see a Prairie State show, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna walk away having a good time. That's for sure. Oh, I bet. I bet. Uh, any interesting stories about you guys being on the road? Is there any stories that you'd like to share? Huh. <laughs> well, interesting is can be good or bad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, nothing immediately pops to mind that would be, uh, you know, uh, PG-13. I don't know. You, you hear about stuff like, you know, guys getting into car accidents and things like that and uh we've been pretty lucky with all that um you know it's we're all adults now so the stories aren't as wild as back in the old days okay <laughs> when mike and doc were younger uh they, were, they had some crazy stories of being on the road and, and you know sleeping in squalor and and all that stuff but nowadays you know we like to uh it's about being professional so the days of the 80s and 90s and or, you know, being a rock star, <laughs> you know, you can't really buy into that anymore and be successful at this. You got to be professional. So, gotcha. That makes sense. Touring is, is mostly boring, to be honest with you. It's mostly driving forever. It's sitting around waiting for something to happen for soundtrack to go. And then that one or two hours on stage, that's where the magic happens. Right. So, uh, do you have a favorite song that the band sings that you like immediately, like, oh, yeah, this is my jam? Uh, I think right now would be every little town. I love I love playing that song live. Um, the video for that song is uh, really connected to me. From my uh, it's from my dad's hometown. We shot it there, so it's got a nice emotional connection for me. I like that one. It's a good answer. I like that song too. Yeah, right on. Glad you do. And uh, let's. So I appreciate you talking about the band, but let's talk a little bit more about you. So like sure. before the band, how did you start your career? I've been playing music really my whole life. I got my first guitar when I was five years old. My aunt gave it to me. Um, she's my godmother. and She's very proud of that fact that I'm still <laughs> playing today. I've got that guitar at home sitting on the, sitting on a shelf. Uh, it's pretty cool. And yeah, I've just always loved music. I've always played in bands and uh, you know, throughout the years I've played in bands all, all around the Edmonton area and, and just always love music. And, and then when the opportunity came up to, uh, when Matt crossed my path and we, we created this, this thing and, and it just kind of took off from there. So like I said, 20 year overnight success. <laughs> right. Uh, are you the only one in your family that has a musical background or is there anyone else? Um, my dad plays piano a little bit, uh, but yeah, none of my siblings really got into music. I don't know. I just, uh, my great grandmother was, was it actually a concert pianist? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I, I never got the opportunity to meet her, but, uh, yeah, she, uh, and my parents still have her old metronome sitting on their piano at home. She was, I guess, that's quite awesome. a big deal back in the old days. Yeah. So maybe that's where I got it from. Yeah. It sounds like you have a little bit of uh, music in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> Must be. Do, do you have any passions besides music? Oh yeah, um, you know, family's important when I'm um, I get to spend time with uh, my wife and kids, and and you know, we just went snowboarding yesterday. So uh, that, <laughs> that, that must have been fun. Yeah, it was a good time. You know, stuff like that, like getting 
getting to spend time with with friends and family is, is important when you get some downtime. Right. And speaking of uh, performing, what's it like to perform on stage? Oh man, it's it's my happy place. I think it's a happy place for the guys in the band too. It's it's really magical. I think it's uh, you get like a sixth sense connection with each other. You can almost read each other's minds about you know without having to say anything about what's next or who goes here or in and just the connection with with the crowd too. When, when people sing uh, the lyrics back to us, it still gives me goosebumps. It's, it's like, wow, <laughs> something we created connected to somebody and, and that's where you feel it and that's where you see it. So playing live is, is the place. Right. That's good to hear. Uh, yeah. Do you have like a, before you perform or after you perform, do you do anything special or different or do you just go with the flow now? Uh, we have kind of a tradition before we start playing. Um, everybody, we get all set up. We get everything organized when everyone's ready to go. Five of us all give each other a hug. And then right before the curtain drops, and then boom, off we go. That's cool. Um, yeah. Probably not more so now, but before, in your earlier years of performing, uh, if you were performing and, like, the crowd re – wasn't reacting to what like what you wanted or not paying attention. Did that ever bother you? Uh, I played so many shows like that, probably more shows like that than the opposite. Especially you know playing in bars and and playing cover right. tunes. And uh, I I played one show once where there was one guy in the place, and he was playing a VLT with his back to us. <laughs> so you know what? You just make the best of those nights. You still have fun with each other. You still have fun playing. Um, it could be, you know, you're you're getting paid to hang out with your friends and and make music. So, even in those situations, it it's still a blast. That's good to hear. Uh, do you have a favorite venue or place you performed at? Oh man, there's in Edmonton. We used to play at this bar called On the Rocks all the time. Mm -hmm. It was a a cover band place. We had a, a lot of good nights, a lot of fun there. Um, now as we've kind of expanded into what we do now um the, there's this venues um the national music center in calgary was really cool oh it yeah was, i've been there once it's awesome yeah that was yeah that was an amazing night just what a venue and the history in there and it was pretty cool so that, that was a pretty neat one is there like a dream place you want to perform at someday yeah this, uh the arena Okay. Down the street here, Rogers. That'll that'll be uh that'll be cool when that when that happens. Yeah. We're gonna put that put that out in the universe now. When that happens, it'll be neat. That's a good idea. Um right. so what would you say are some of the positives and negatives of tour touring? Uh yeah, like I said before, the negatives are the boredom. It's being away from your loved ones. Um and you know expense it costs a lot of money now to to get across canada <laughs> uh but the benefits are are playing those shows and meeting fans and meet, making new fans and just connecting with people across the country and across the world that's that's the best that sounds awesome so if you don't mind if i can ask a couple questions about you just sure, like a sure. general okay sweet uh what's your favorite color black the kids always bug me. That's my entire wardrobe. Any reason for that or just luck of the draw? It's just easy. Con concert shirts <laughs> are the majority of my wardrobe and you're usually black. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's your most prized possession you own? The most prized possession? Probably that, uh, that guitar I told you about that I got when I was five. It's pretty cool. That's a good, that's a good one. That's a good one to have right there. Yeah. What is your greatest accomplishment in life? Oh, greatest accomplishment in life, I think, is being happy. Uh, I don't, good I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's money. I don't think it's awards. I think it's living a li living a life that that you're happy with, and that could be any measure of success. But I I think that's the goal to to get to. That's true. That's so true. Do you have a favorite memory? Favorite memory, man. No, because. There's so many different ones that are amazing. <laughs> it's another good you know, answer. Like, yeah, there's, yeah, too many different good ones. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite holiday? Favorite holiday. I like Halloween. I love the movies. I love, 
I love, uh, I have a tradition where I, uh, I start getting out the, the Halloween movies and watch them all month long. It's fun. Oh yeah. Uh, what's your average week look like? Are you like rehearsing a lot or did like a lot of media marketing or how's that go with you? Yes. Every day there's something to do. Uh, yeah, there's media, there's social media, there's marketing. We, we rehearse as a band. Um, and then, you know, all the fun stuff like paperwork, accounting, uh, you know, being in a band is, is, is running a business and it is, it's a job. So it's, you know, there's always something to do. Okay. Do you have any favorite TV shows or movies that kind of stand stick out or stand up above the rest? Just started watching The Last of Us. This has been pretty great. Uh, oh, it's yeah. neat to see the, uh, the, the landmarks of, of Alberta. That's pretty cool. I've yeah, been enjoying that one. That's and then favorite, favorite movie, I think, would be The Big Lebowski. I love oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <a> good. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a funny one. Yeah, I love it. Uh, what are you most thankful for in your life? Thankful for? Oh, man. I start every day by thinking about what I'm thankful for. And that's it starts with my family, you know, and my health. And then from there, it goes on to all the blessings that, I, that I've got, you know, this, this musical career and, and, you know, just putting food on the table and everything else. I think it's a great way to start your day, thinking about that kind of thing. Right. Good. Another good answer, man. You're just full of good <laughs> answers. <laughs> Is there anything you wish pe more people knew about you that sometimes it gets under the radar because you're in a band, but I think people should know that they don't know. Oh, about the band or me personally? Either or, you know. Oh, the band. I would just, I, I'd like more people to, uh, to hear us and see us live. I think, uh, hearing us on online is one thing, but uh, man, I can't wait to, to reach more people and see, have them see our show because I think that's where we connect. So, like, that's what I like. Okay. And for yourself? For me, I don't know, man. I'm my heart on my sleeve most of the time. Not much, <laughs> not much hidden here. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you have a favorite animal? Uh, favorite animal? Dogs. Dog? Yeah, who doesn't love a good puppy? <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah. Do you have any animals? No, not anymore. Okay. Yeah. Not right now, put it that way. <laughs> okay. What's, <laughs> what's one thing you wish you could do that you haven't done yet? Oh, man, play Rogers. <laughs> uh, is there any kind of um kind of risks or rewards you want to take that you haven't done previously but now you feel like you could um i don't know i think uh i think i am taking those risks and and you know not this musical life isn't for everybody but you know you just keep doing it because you love it and, and the rewards are coming in now so it's it's pretty great to see that's good to hear that's great to hear uh and does the uh, Prairie States have any merch? Yeah, we do. It's all on the website, prairiestates.com. We, uh, we work with a really great designer named Pete Wynn who does all kinds of cool designs and things. He's actually nominated for a uh, Country Music Alberta Award this year for design because he has such cool stuff. So, yeah, check it out. Awesome. I, it sounds like I'm going to have to get some merch. All right. <laughs> And uh, this last little bit here, is there anyone you'd like to shout out or promote or anything like, anything like that? Uh, we've got a few upcoming shows. Uh, we've got one in Edmonton on March 11th Ooh. with uh, Sakamoto Agency. Our agency is putting on a Juno show. So we're one of five acts. Uh, people can see all five acts for 30 bucks. It's a pretty great deal. And, yeah, we'll be playing the Union Hall. I think doors open at 7. So, yeah. You're in the Edmonton area. Come check it out. Sounds like I might have to go. Hey, come on down. It'd be nice to meet you in person. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to chat about with me or in general or anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, I just want to you know, say thanks for checking out the band and your interest in us. And, and yeah, we appreciate the support. 
Well, I appreciate your music, your guys' music, and all the good you've been doing. And I appreciate the time, your time, so I can interview you. And hopefully, I we can uh, I see you somewhere down the line and and all that. Maybe get some autographs in person. Sounds great, Dylan. It was really nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you too. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Goodbye. Okay. Right, bye. Bye.